it's very warm here, right? And uh, after lunch, so I really appreciate you guys show up, and uh, I hope you not fall asleep. So if you want to eat or drink, please feel free. As a teacher, we always tolerate that. Uh, I want to share a story before uh, we start to talk about uh, psychobiosocial states. About five years ago, I was attending a local junior tournament. Um, so I think the event was under 13 girls single final. And that little girl, Jenny, she's young, 10 years old, and she's very proud of herself, so she played up. So we all know girls about that age, they have big difference physically. So her opponent was a very mature 12 years old girl. So you can imagine physically she was much, much bigger. And, uh, you know, play badminton in that age, physically advantage really put a lot of a, like a um, benefit for the match. So unfortunately, and it's expected, uh, Jenny was losing. She was a very exciting in the beginning of the match, but she was crying after the first game, and crying, crying, crying. And she's begging her mom, mommy, please, I don't want to play. Mommy, please, I want to stop. Mommy, please, I want to go home. And I was sitting there, I feel so sorry, and heartbreaking, right? Were you heartbreaking to see that? But her mom just keeps saying, Jenny, just, let's just play, don't worry about that. So she played and she finished the match. So Mr. Johnson sat next to me. We all know people like that. They like to come in a lot in the tournament. So she said, Wendy, Jenny could play much, much better if she controlled her emotion. And I was just like big roll my eyes inside. And I was thinking about, she's 10 years old. I'm 50 years old, I cannot control my emotion. How are you expecting 10 years old girl to control emotion in that such big pressure, under such a big pressure? But I didn't say that to Mr. Johnson. I was just like, uh, and I started thinking, oh, I forgot. Oh, <laughs> this is not little Jenny. This, this is uh, uh, a girl, but she's much younger. So if she can control her emotion. So I started to, thinking about what exactly Jenny was thinking during that match. So what exactly she was perceived at that circumstances. Was she perceived the same exactly as the girl she played against to, or differently? So what exactly a player perceived during the match? Did you ever think of that? What do they really exactly perceive? Do you think Jenny and her opponent received same thing? Do they feel the same? It's the same match. So I keep thinking about this question for the last five years and trying to figure out what's the difference between Jenny and her opponent? What's the difference but between Jenny and Mr. Johnson? So let's have a little bit uh, icebreaker. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a teacher. I like to do this kind of thing. So. Turn and talk, uh, introduce yourself to the people sitting next to you. We're gonna have two more days in this, not conference, but in the tournament. Uh, so thinking about yourself or your player, what's the most common emotion do you think they will experience before a match or during the match? Think about it, or you can talk about it. You wanna talk to your, your friends next to you? What's the emotion? <laughs> All right. Five seconds. Okay. All right. Good discussion. So anybody want to yell out? What the people sit next to you tell you the secret? of the emotion? Everybody want to yell out? What do you have or your common feeling about before or after match? Yeah, fear of making you fail. A fear of a, to fail. Yeah. Okay, that, that's a very complicated feeling, but that is true. What else? You, have, you guys talk a lot.
confidence. Confidence is so important. I need the confidence to walk up these stairs too. So yes, confidence. Okay, about opponent, you evaluate the opponent, a better opponent. Okay, yes. So what else? That is the thinking. Feel upset if they lose. Yes. Doubts. Doubts. Confused and doubts. Yes. Shock. Really. Okay, all right, that is very good emotion too. So all of the emotion actually are good, believe it or not. So, oh, did I did it also already? So what is the impact emotion to any sport? So this is the most common explanation by Desi. Well, he is a psychologist. Uh, most of the research is about motivation. So stimulus, just like in the match, is a stimulus. It's kind of an environment provided to us. And each of us perceive that stimulus differently, believe it or not. So Jenny and her opponent, to see that match differently, they will tell a totally different story. That perception about that stimulus is depends on our experience, it's about knowledge, our age, whatever happened to us. So each of us, you talk about, when I talk about this emotion, each of you, even you are here today, listen to me. I believe everybody will think differently. De depends your knowledge from before, depends how much you expect me to be here, depends physically how tired you are, or how eagerly you want to go back to watch some matches. So that kind of perception will make everybody respond in your emotion, which will be different. Fortunately, emotion, you can control and manipulate, which is a good thing, right? If we don't, everybody will be like Jenny, begging for mom not to do it anymore. So this is a good thing, an emotion, which is impact not only sport, for every aspect of your, our life. So whenever you guys, whatever you guys were talking about, it's a certain form of emotion. And most of the study about emotion mostly is about uh, motivation, it's about how do we reduce the uh, anxiety before matches. So actually, uh, from the previous study, that's a seven different form of emotion, which is we perceive differently and respond differently. First one, cognitive, how much you think. Uh, how do you perceive and thinking about that stimulus to me uh, or happen to me. Feeling how nervous you are, how anxious you are, how exciting you are, how happy you are. So that is direct. We, we, we were thinking about feeling and emotion, mostly in this category. Motivation. How much you still want to keep in the game? Uh, the inner drive uh, for you to keep doing that. So little Jenny, she's not very motivated. She wants to go home. So motivation. So all of this is psychological part. Of a, uh, of a state, which has happened in, during our performance. And those two will also state uh, happen during our performance competition. Uh, it's biological, body. So how tense you feel about your muscles are, how shaking you are, so hot, sweat, your body reaction, or motor behavior, how smooth you can move around, or you're just stuck. I cannot carry my body to where I want to be. So it's biological, how that biological feel about uh, during the match. And this too was socially. Well, I would define it as a relationship. Operational performance is a kind of relationship to yourself. We're thinking about how did I do in general about this, uh, responded to this stimulus or uh, during the match. Communication. How much I feel like I be ignored or I'm isolated. So little Jenny feel isolated. Little Jenny doesn't want to disappoint her mother, right? So she has a big state to respond it in communication. So all of this is a common state will happen during matches. Seven, not just one. So it's very carefully categorized. 
And that's not it, because in, in that, all of the seven, uh, seven states interact with time, which is when did it happen, how old when this happened, uh, is before match, during match, or uh, was the last month. So time will play the, uh, a big role uh, to, for your respondent to, uh, to the match. Intensity, how strong you feel each component. Uh, content, is this emotion or state help you to play better or hurt you to play better? Or, so that is uh, the content of, the, uh, of the, the state. And most important is context. Which tournament? Is this tournament in my home court? Is this tournament a world championship or just local tournament? The contact played a big role of this, uh, those states. So all of this interact together. So actually the proof, nobody will respond to exactly the same game in the same way. So how do we help our athletes, or our students in my case, to identify their own states would be turn out very very important. So Ms. Johnson used his way to trying to feel what uh, little Jenny was, but little Jenny probably have a different feeling about that match. So how do we identify the match? Uh, oh, sorry. How do we identify the individual that uh, states during the match will be very crucial. Because we all know, in psychologically, if you don't aware your emotion, there is no way you can control that. Or you probably do it differently, right? So this is uh, the part of today's talk. Uh, I want to demonstrate uh, how do we identify individual uh, states uh, the best, for the best performance before a match. How do we identify each in, uh, athlete's their, uh, well, pretty much is how do we prepare athletes uh, mental ready before they get on the court. So first part is we're gonna identify their individual states, just like I say, all of this interact together to define how, what is the best state for your athletes or us before the match. The second part is when we know that, how are we gonna use it? How do we self-regulate uh, self it to make it the best fit before they step on the, on the court. So, I'm a teacher, again. So I like to give a handout. So we're gonna give it a handout, and then we uh, do some practice. And uh, so, just in case you guys a little bit need some you know, hands on, so we can do something, right? Of course, we can do it uh, electronically, but I prefer use paper, very traditional. You guys doing so good? So, so far so good? I'm being cleared? Okay. All right, so now I want you guys, you, you, can, you can use yourself, uh, I believe a lot of you play, uh, so you can use yourself to identify your best state, or you can use your player, so you can use, think about either way. So if you use yourself, let's say we use yourself. Think about, first part, think about your best performance. Now best performance doesn't mean you win, we all know, sometimes we don't win, but we play very good. And sometimes when we win, we play terrible. So now you think about, you define your best performance. When did it happen? Where did it happen? What did it happen during your best performance? Just think about it. Think about two seconds. Can you guys pick it up, the best performance right away? I see some smiling. You probably enjoy that best performance. Now, 
we got to go to the other side. Think about your worst performance. When did it happen? Where did it happen? What did it happen? Think about it. Now I don't see smiles. The worst performance. So this is the kind of question you started to communicate with your athletes. Uh, In-depth conversation. They probably can talk for hours about the experience. So just, just let it go. All right. So we just quickly thinking about those two experiences you had. We good? Okay. Now you can put on this page. Can you find the page? Step two. During your best performance. In the first column, can you circle, uh, select up to three um, factor items from each column? So three for top, three for bottom. The most describe the states during your best performance. So best, what did happen? Don't check your neighbor's answer, answers. Nobody should be the same. You'll feel different than the others. We good? All right, I choose energetic, confident, and motivated. All right. Now, you choose another three, up to three, uh, from the bottom column. If you can only find two, that's fine too. All right, I choose intense, worried, and nervous. Okay, now we turn into the next page, which is step three, your worst performance. During your worst performance, can you pick up three, up to three uh, from the first column, which is the states describe your harmful but neg and also negative. All right. And then we'll pick up another up to three uh, from the bottom column, uh, which is harmful but positive. Doing your worst performance, worst. So I choose relax, easy, and comfortable. Okay, so uh, I got to take it from here. So you guys can finish that after the talk or sometime during uh, when you go back to the hotel. Um, this is very good practice, especially for younger kids, to reflect what do they feel during, uh, during the match. Because sometimes kids just tell you, how do you play? What do they say? Bad, yes, bad usually is very common, and good, and then nothing else. So a lot of a practice for them just to think about this would be very beneficial for them to aware what do they really think, okay. So this is step one and two, so we all pick it up your own states, right? We're doing good? Okay, I'll take it from here, so I'll just do the step four and the five. Then now, for the next page, it's in your handout, so you guys can fill it out when you 
uh, back to the hotel or, or after the talk. So we just filled in all of the states. We just circled. All right, just make sure uh, the helpful, positive, helpful, negative, harmful, negative, harmful, positive, going to be in the right place. So far, so good? All right, so you can transfer that after, uh, after the talk. All right, so this states, believe it or not, is the most common states for me to experience during performance. It's for me. I, I, bet, I bet everybody is. Nobody's exactly like me. So this is the emotion I usually have during performance, either good performance or bad performance. All right? So now, remember, we say, well, it's a several interaction. This is a state, which is the first column of all of the words. Interact with inten intensity. How strong I feel this word. How strong I feel this is kind of uh, state during my performance. Now, I only focus on good performance. My, during my best performance, how do I feel about this? So how strong I feel about this uh, state. So I feel pretty good. I feel pretty energetic, so I put a seven. I feel very motivated, I put it an A, and very confident. So confidence is very important for me. Kind of nervous, kind of worried, a little bit intense. During my best performance, this is how I feel. All right, but also during my performance, I feel very connect with my partners. I feel very connect with my coach, very connect. So that is kind of low. During my perform best performance, I'm not that anxious. I'm pretty okay. And comfortable, yes, but not too much. Relax and feel easy. So that's for me and also including intensity during my best performance. So when you go back to hotel, when you put all the your states there, try to rate yourself. How do you feel? How intense you feel during that performance, your best performance, only best. So now we got this chart, right? Everybody got their own chart. We're going to transfer that into a graph, of course. Now, same thing. We put all of our states there and dot all of the intensity on the chart, and we connect it. Voila, this is my own individual profile for my best performance states I supposed to be. It will look like a mountain, like an iceberg, like this. This is pretty common for best performance, which means during the middle, is the state we want to keep it high, which is the helpful, uh, either positive or negative state. We want to keep as high as possible. Both sides there, it's a kind of a negative. Those are states generally can hurt me. So I will want to keep it low, in control. All right? So this state, in my mind, will, will help me to be mental re ready before I get on the court. Everybody will be different. Trust me, everybody will be different. OK, so this is my individual uh, zone of optimal uh, 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 of a function. So we want to keep the, 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 the uh, helpful states as high as possible. So now we got the states, right? We know what should we feel to make me perform well. So how do we regulate that? How do we control that? So this is a very, very popular, no, uh, yeah, it's a very popular uh, theory about silver regulation by Zimmerman. Um, we're talking about emotion control. It's a kind of a, a process, ongoing process. It's not just you can just get it done overnight or instant, take it a medicine, you, you will get it. It's overcome like easily, uh, not, not as easy, but the process, you keep it doing, setting a goal, monitoring, and reflex, kind of keep going on and on for years. So I added uh, from the, the profile we had and uh, also the self-regulation uh, model. So basically, we can keep doing that over and over again, not doing just for the match, 
just start to practice during training. The younger you start it, it's better because the kids were starting to regulate their emotion early on and aware of their emotion. So starting my first step is that profile, right? You guys already have, right? And then, so before the match, and we were starting to check how is my status going to be, and then modify that, and then reflect. So this is self-regulation. So this is another profile, very similar to mine, but this is uh, from a player I work with. So that's his profile, right? Iceberg, it's good, right? Uh, so this is his best state to help him to perform well. Actually, he did win a big match uh, at that tournament. So this is his ideal state. We want him to be ready before the match, okay? A second step, step, uh, step is the mindset. Okay, we got ideal states we want to do, right? Okay, that's our goal. But you have to evaluate what is your current state. We're not always keep, like, keep that best state all the time, right? So we evaluate ourselves. What's my current state? Oh, I'm pretty relaxed. This is an opponent I've been playing for years. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. It's not, it's uh, easy. So I'm just sitting there, watching some YouTube, funny video. Just let it be. Okay, that is my curious state. But we know, this is not probably not good for me, right? I'm not motivated high enough, and we know motivated is very important, right? So, he has self-assessed uh, self himself. It's not probably the best for me. I should probably motivate myself a little bit more. So you set a goal and trying to fix it. So for this, this is a several uh, technique can help us to either increase of your state or decrease your state. So it depends on your players. So it would be different too. So this is a kind of technique you can practice over and over during your training and uh, set it up. So sometimes, for example, music will help the, sometimes music help a uh, player to decrease their anxiety, but sometimes music help player to bring it up the excitement. So it depends what music they listen to. So that's a study of the swimmers uh, uh, to use music to monitoring their uh, psychobiosocial states. So that depends on player. So you have to under your play, understand your player or that you, your player to get involved in the process of regulate their own uh, emotions. Sports watch usually is very helpful today. So I don't want myself being too relaxed. So my sport watch tell me my heartbeat rate is very relaxed, like almost fall asleep, right? So this is not good for me. So what I should do, I should probably run a little bit, keep up my heartbeat a little bit, motivate myself a little bit. So that probably will help for me to get a better state before I, before I put myself uh, on the court to start the match. So this is the third step. So when we set a goal, we're trying to mo uh, mod uh, modify and adjust to, the, to have the best state before uh, mentally ready for before the match. So the player I work with, the red line was his ideal state, okay? In the first slide we had on the step one. And the blue line is reflex after the match. He told me he did pretty good. He think he did good. It's not about winning and losing. It's about how does he feel about the match. So we do the process again. Ask him to evaluate him himself again with each state. How do you feel before the match? So they come out with the blue one. So it's pretty similar. So this is a kind of a data you can collect or your player can collect himself over the years. You can see that data. Sometimes it's changing over years. The kids may feel different. Uh, Teenagers usually have that anger. So that angry will be there. When you get an adult, you'll be a different. You will be more cognitive wise with the thinking about uh, the, the, to regulate your emotion. So this is the kind of chart we're changing. 
will be changing. So you were trying to update it uh, quite often uh, to keep it updated. Are we good? So it's very easy for step to sell to regulate your emotion. Bring up your best ideal state you're supposed to be. Second step. What is the second step? Do you still remember? Second step. When you have ideal states, what are you going to do? The second step before the match. You evaluate your current state, right? Because we already have a goal and we try to reach the goal, right? You evaluate your current state, you will compare your current state with your ideal state and set a goal. I want to increase or, re or decrease certain states, right? We good? All right, the third step, the third step will be adjust, working on that emotion to base on the technique you practice over years. And fourth step is after the match, you reflect and make a different chart. Four easy step, several regulation, uh, which is I work with a lot of kids have test anxiety uh, over the years uh, in the classroom and also in the uh, sports practice this kind of a, um, of a, a technique a lot to regulate it, uh, emotion, uh, athletes' emotion. All right. Control, control, you must learn control. Does anybody know who say that? It's the master of control. You that did. Okay, so why we learn control? What is that important? So that process we had, we set it up the, the, our own state and they'll then try to self-regulate it. It's a pre-match. The practice we had is pre-match. But also you can use this, uh, this uh, kind of a technique during those 11 points interval. If you had pretty not, didn't pre perform well first half, quickly 40 seconds in one minute, you were trying to straighten up your best state. Little technique, deep breathe a little bit, Try to calm yourself down, to shake it off that anxiety. Anything you can do, can do it in a quick 40 seconds. So this is also can repeat all the, this kind of a technique um, to turn this game around on the second half. So, and also in the bigger picture is, you want player to take that control, to be the owner of their match, of their performance. And first of all, they want to, you want them to learn how to be the owner of their emotion. So Mr. Johnson cannot tell little Jenny, how does she feel? Nobody can tell me how I feel. Oh, I'm going to be really upset as a middle-aged woman. Nobody tell me that. So that is make that ownership uh, for their own kind of a um, performance. It is so important, especially for younger player. Gradually, they feel like, I'm part of this. I can make a change. I don't have to wait somebody like Mr. Johnson tell me what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to play, how do I feel. So let's motivate them to be in the sport, to be better, to want to change. Because if you feel in the, stuck in the situation, feel like, it's not me to make a difference, and you're not going to stay there very long, the motivation is going to be gone. So in control is very important in a bigger picture to keep the player kind of as an agent ha has a, the ownership of their own play, uh, of their own performance. Look, deep down, we were sitting here because we want to help our player, right? Right? So we, the winning is not our goal, right? Do you believe that? It's part of it. It's not the only goal, right? Please tell me, yes. Because if only winning is your only goal, being the coach, I think you, go, you should go build a robot, right? We don't want to treat our player as a machine. We don't want them to play as a machine. We want them to play 
like a human. This is how exciting the sport is, right? They bring the variety and diversity to this kind of a, uh, 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 the content, context. So emotion actually is a good thing. It's part of a human, and we want to keep that. We don't want them to feel like they play, they don't feel anything, just go play. We want them to feel. But more important is, how do we control that feeling? We don't want them to feel nothing about their play. We want them to feel something. But control would be more important, important too. So over the years, from junior, when they started that, if, if you, you guys as a coach, I'm not a coach, so I didn't know how much of time you guys practice the kids for a perfect footwork. For young kids, like I would say, 10 years old. Basic. A lot, I believe, right? Basic something. Or swing, clear, right? But how much of time you help them to do emotion control or regulation. And we all know, in the end, today, all of the top players play at the World Championship. Their skills are all perfect. They all ended up in the mind game. But when we prepare their skill, do we also prepare their emotion control? Use that emotion as the most powerful weapon when they get onto the court. So this is what I, um, what I believe, and I'm uh, uh, very happy to share with all, all of you, and you guys are a great audience. Nobody fall asleep. <laughs> this is uh, my little goal as a teacher. All right, so thank you very much. So I can, do we have time for a question? We do have a few minutes for questions. Uh, so if anybody's got questions, please raise your hand and wait for the mic so that we can pick it up on the recording. Yeah, so questions. Um, I'm not quite sure if I got that, uh, how you include the negative emotions with the positive ones. I mean, that, that contradiction in a way, you know, that false positive. How is that meant? I mean, why, why, I mean, if I ask a player about his best performance, mm -hmm. he will not know, uh, he will not say anything about angry or afraid, usually. Yeah. Because he was always on top. And, and the other way around as well. Yes, yeah, so this is a very good question. So sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll say, well, you cannot, maybe you cannot pick up a three or the negative, or the negative emotion. Sometimes negative emotion it's not necessarily being very harmful. Some negative emotion sometimes will come in handy to help you. So for some time, the very positive emotion is not always helpful. Such as though I know the player, he cannot be too relaxed. When he relax, he start losing because he's very cocky. So he knows about that. So during the 11 points, he was trying to be serious. So too much of relax actually is not good for him. So sometimes he has to, he need that nervous, he need that anxiety in his game. So he knows that, but he's gonna keep it in balance, keep it in check, because you don't want that to overpower all the confidence you have. So in this research, and it is not, um, it's kind of introduced, actually some negative emotion actually help you to perform. Um, the, the handout I gave it to you guys with all of the factors, all of the items, actually, uh, that's is much more. And you can add more for your own player because some player, so that is why the first part of interview is very important. Maybe he will say something different, right? So you can put in there. So this is, you guys can custom made for your, your player. So if you do not have that much of a negative emotion, they will be fine too. They will be okay too. So it's just make you think about uh, each of the states could be represent some meaningful uh, uh, of, a, of a response to your performance. Right. Did I answer your question? Okay. 
Uh, you spoke about uh, emotional regulation. Uh, would you also throw light on some other psychological skills training which are important for the badminton players? Uh, apart, apart from psychology psychological training. skills training, mental skills training, which can be important. Did you, uh, is there any specific player you were thinking of? Because what is the problem of the, the player? What, what kind of a psychology you want to, they wanted to, to do? What kind of a, do you can be more specific? Uh, improving his confidence level. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, maybe uh, bringing down the fear factor. Okay, okay. Um, creating positive uh, belief. Okay. All of these. Okay. All right. So I can, because this is very different. So there's a different technique, player by player. So uh, confidence. So it's still, first of all, the first assumption is you don't do it overnight. So you need time. So it also depends on the player. So how to build up the confidence or trust. So this is over time. So build up the confidence. Junior player, little kids, children. Do you talk about children or adults? Junior, junior. junior yes, 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 okay, junior. Yeah, that is the most exciting creature. Yeah, it's confidence, also age too. So if it's a younger, it's easier. Teenager, sometimes it's a little bit trickier. So over the years, you have to understand what is the, the factor to affect their fear. And then working on that, the trust, for so your tr the trust to the coach is very important. And build it up uh, little by little. If his frustration or her frustration is from losing the game, so you have to pick up the right tournament for him or her. Starting from their comfort zone, you know, for me, if I go play with Dai Zing, what do you think? How, what's the chance I'm going to win? That's not going to build my confidence, right? So in the psychology, we call the zone plasma development. You have to understand the kids, what's their potential to success. It's not, don't have to be easy. It have to be a little bit challenging, but not way too much. So a little bit challenging boost up their motivation to win. If you give them an opponent, which is so easy, they're not going to have the best performance. They will just play lousy and win. They know there's not best performance. But if they give a little bit challenging, they can stretch that out, and they kind of play the best. They will know. Kids know. Say, I play really good. That builds up their confidence. Sometimes when they get older, they will understand winning probably is not the only thing uh, Boost up, my, boost up my confidence, because best performance is. They will play really good and feel good about themselves. So little by little, as a coach, in practically, I was thinking, pick up the right opponent for them to start to build it up, their confidence. If they feel like that kind of a, a, a performance, uh, they can in control. Not like a play with something in the situation, I have no way can do the best, it can, even I do my best, I'm not gonna, I, I have no chance whatsoever uh, to win or to, to, to perform well as I expect. So that will kind of uh, hurting them a little bit. I would suggest trying to understand their level and their potential, stretch a little bit and kind of help them to build it up. Do I? Answer your question? Yeah, because sometimes I have a, a, a young player, so the states for him will be different. What is most important to him is communication. So the partner for him is very important. So if he doesn't, even he play, if he, even he play today with uh, Leon Day in a double, he would not be happy. He's not gonna play his best. Why? Because it's not his friend. So he like to play with somebody he trusts he enjoy to play with, and also build up a trust feeling. So that state for him is very important. So you're gonna, as a coach, you're gonna find a partner for him, not just the best player, but also he feel most connected with. So in that case, maybe they will not win, but they will play the best. So it also depends each player. Did I answer your question? Okay, thank you. Okay, great. We've got time for one last question here. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, just just curious about the pre-match uh, because step one was profiling, step two was uh, uh, modific- uh, sorry, uh, uh, that uh, evaluation, step three was modification because all these uh, need some time. Mm-hmm. So if we talk about practicality down to implementation, right? So usually, let's say I manage a team of 10 or mm-hmm. 20, mm-hmm. is it a norm to do it in a group? Or just one to one because this one take times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 there is a group. Yeah. This is a survey which is uh, kind of a, um, a, a, a. I can I can I can give you another copy of it. It's a kind of a group. You can you can you can check. So my uh, I have a poster. Uh, research is it's it's down uh, downstairs, which is I use the the, the group survey, so you can use a group. To, I, see, to yeah, because most of, I believe most of the coaches uh, do have all these professional backgrounds to conduct. Mm. So I think even you are managing the elite players, you probably have a professional to do the psychology portion. Yeah. So I just, a lot of us, I, I believe in my opinion, a lot of us miss that psychology portion because of um, it, it takes a lot of time. Yes. And if you are not looking at elites, you're not managing elites, probably you just, ah, just leave that out. Whenever we have time, yeah. just talk a bit. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to conduct this in the, very uh, structural way, I believe it must be a way to you know conduct in a group manner, set up. Right, right, right. That, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this. Yeah, because, well, you guys coaching junior players, right? A lot of them. How many of them do you think could be play world championship? Would be Olympian, to be honest. So most of the kids, they play. And also the expectation from parents. So if the parents can tell you, my son gonna be Olympian, just you know, kick them out. They say, well, it's no way your son gonna be Olympian. Just tell them the truth. But most of the kids want to grow in this sport. So I would say, what will help them the most if they one day they're not playing? The perfect bad hand or emotion control? Did I answer your question? So, so I, I, I'm not just saying backhand doesn't, doesn't matter or footwork doesn't matter. They all matter. They all matter. But just compared to the skill-wise, we kind of ignore this part of very important to help our junior not only as a good player, but one day be a good person, hopefully. So this is just like we kind of didn't pay that as much of a time or attention to this. Yes, I totally agree. But uh, sometimes you do talk to your player. So just some quick question will help, help them. Just quickly ask them, how do you feel about this game or match? Just ask them to express that. Five minutes doesn't have to be too long. And you don't have to make a perfect chart like I did. You can just profile yourself or let the kid profile themselves. Because once they think about it, and they speak up about it, they will not forget. So from learning uh, science perspective. So when they think about it, they speak it out. So their kind of ima- uh, image will stay with them. So next time, when you ask the same question, they will kind of think about this again. So you want them to always aware of this kind of emotion. It's very helpful in general. Even they, one day they don't, don't play, if they, where well, I break up with a boyfriend, girlfriend, they, they're helpful. No, self emotion control. All right, did I answer your question? Okay, good, thank you.